inability. And, uh, and oh, that Dr. Forrest, oh, wow, this rain that. feels just like hurricane wind driven rain. Uh, and these are the obviously the most significant uh, winds that we've seen. What causes the supercell winds on the backside to be the strongest? Yeah, there's your, in this area, there's your rear flank downdraft in action, Mike. The, uh, that rain-cooled air is wrapped yeah. all the way around the west side and now to the south side, and, and now it's coming east toward you. You're in the, you're in the outflow that, is, that has come down around in, on that rear flank of the storm. Very good, Dr. Forrest. We've got another vantage point of you. Uh, we've got a live streaming camera uh, with our embedded journalist, Katie Turr, and you're witnessing hail within this as well. As far as hail size, Dr. Forbes, what can determine hail size? And just like that, our rain is gone. Well, the, the hail size, how big hail can get, uh, is largely determined by how intense the thunderstorm uh, updrafts are, because uh, the hail is sort of levitated aloft it's suspended there by the updraft just joggling around adding new growth layers on top of it until it gets so big it falls out so the stronger the updraft of the storm the bigger the hail uh, and certainly we've seen uh, once the, you know the record is uh, about seven inch diameter kind of hail uh, and I, I haven't uh, seen just uh, have we had any hail reports from this storm there, uh, earlier, I had seen, before we came on air here, I had seen uh, some one-inch hail had been reported in the early stages of, of the storm. Right. Dr. Forbes, when we watched uh, the tornado itself form, and especially on the north side, that is where we saw what, what we thought were probably some of the most intense downdrafts within that hail because we need a strong updraft to support it, and then it comes down in those downdrafts on the north side. Can you kind of explain or diagram for us the tornado itself seemed to be on the south side of the supercell. Is that a fairly classic location for the tornado and the hook echo to form? Yeah, the, the, uh, the tornado tends to form on the south, the southwest side of the supercell. Do we have, uh, can we have a look at uh, a radar perhaps in my screen so I can, can view, uh, point out to the, to the viewers? Uh, uh, it's in a hook and, I, and uh, still, uh, this storm does still appear to have this uh, supercell character to it. The tornado does form on the southwest uh, flanks. There we go. Uh, and uh, you see still a little appendage coming down out of the southwest corner of the storm. Uh, that's where the, the rain-cooled air wraps around here. And uh, this little notch, warm air is still trying to go in. Now off at the moment, that inflow is off to your north. Uh, we may be seeing a possibility of the storm trying to recycle with yet a new tornado forming uh, as it now appears to be moving about ready to move into uh, Banner County in Nebraska, having moved out of Wyoming about ready, the, the rotating part of the storm about ready to move into Nebraska. We watched uh, this from multiple vantage points, Dr. Forbes, on the radar when we were over in Banner County, Nebraska. The soft storm flare uh, north of Cheyenne, at the time it started developing, and probably for the first half hour to 45 minutes of its life, it did not look that impressive on radar. How can you determine on radar itself what kind of storm is going to develop a tornado, or can you, or is that the purpose of Vortex 2? Well, that's a big purpose, a purpose of Vortex 2. Uh, that I was watching the storm. Uh, it very quickly, just in a matter of within 10 or 15 minutes, uh, developed, though, that kind of appendage that I was showing, indicating that it had developed a strong rotation. And then, literally in the five minutes uh, as we came on air here, it developed a, a very well-defined hook echo uh, with that. So it very quickly, within a period of 15 to 20 minutes, went, as you say, from not having apparently any rotation to one that, that had very strong rotation within it. It developed that hook echo, a fish hook, a little curl on the southwest side. Uh, again, to review for everyone what we've witnessed here in the past hour in Goshen County, Wyoming, uh, deployed with Vortex 2, we witnessed the complete life cycle of a tornado as a storm cell uh, off to the north of Cheyenne was a right turner and came right towards us and became a very large wedge tornado on the ground for roughly 20 to 25 minutes and then it began to rope out became more horizontal as the top of the tornado and the base of the tornado became very separated and then the storm now has pushed off we have not witnessed another tornado since what we have witnessed are significantly cooler temperatures 
and a lot more rain now than we had pre-tornado. When the tornado was coming towards us, we had zero precipitation. We didn't even have any hail pre-storm. But then again, our vantage point was more or less from the southeast, and the tornado came directly towards us. You're more likely to see uh, the hail shafts on the north side of the storm. Stick nets, stick net teams have deployed their entire stick net uh, probe devices. There are two dozen of them. The road that we're on right here, folks, is a north-south facing road. So what they did is they deployed them at two mile spacing, and then the entire complex comes right over the stick nets. No tornado came over the stick nets themselves. The tornado actually lifted before it got here. That's not necessarily a bad thing because what they can still measure are winds, precipitation, humidity, and what may be really key in, in determining how tornadoes form and dissipate is temperature. And so the radars have been deployed, the stick nets, the mesonets, and the probes have all been deployed, as well as photogrammetry. What they'll do now is take photographic and video evidence of the tornado. Dr. Forbes, you've been with us this entire time. One thing I want to ask you about is what happens after this now? Because there are storm surveyors here. Your colleague, Dr. Uh, Wakimoto, is part of the survey crew. Is there anything that he can find post-tornado that will help him analyze this tornado? Because it doesn't look, to me, like there was any structural damage. Can he determine anything from, say, ground scour or crop damage? Well, yes, sometimes you can. And uh, they also have the capability, they have the resources that they can uh, rent, uh, say, some type of a small aircraft and go up and look from the air. And sometimes you can indeed find uh, uh, converging patterns uh, in the crop fields there uh, that will indicate uh, where the tornado was. Sometimes uh, you may find little, uh, little looping patterns in the crop pattern that may suggest that there may have been hidden inside that big tornado uh, some embedded funnel clouds. So, yes, indeed, I expect that they will be uh, doing some aerial overflights to, to see if there was some embedded substructure, suction vortices as, as they're called, the little mini tornadoes revolving about the parent tornado. Again, Vortex 2 has been on the road for roughly four weeks, have not seen a tornado so far, and today they pretty much hit the jackpot. A complete formation and dissipation of a tornado from start to finish. They got on it early, deployed every piece of equipment that they have, and a perfect tornado to sample. Absolutely ideal. Open farmland, unpopulated area, perfect view you can see for miles, an obvious advantage to the flat terrain and more of an elevated prospect on some of the roadways as well. Certainly from our vantage point, we could see the tornado from miles away and then it dissipated as it came towards us as it moved more or less southeast or east-southeast on the ground for roughly 20 or 25 minutes. Now, Dr. Forbes, when they go post-analysis on this data and they combine 10 different radars, that in itself has got to be some of the most valuable data that has ever been sampled on a tornado. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. They can, they can take the wind from the radars, pointing at it at different directions, and uh, use that to get the full horizontal and vertical wind fields, the updrafts within the storm, 